name's Marco, and like you, I used to be a new student here in the school. So, you probably don't speak English really well, or you are just learning the language because you come from a foreign country. So in this video, I will show you uh, many interviews and questions I asked to teachers and members of like the school staff and the school community to let you know how will they help you in this new part of your life. And for um, I'm making this video to help you to have a great first year in school and I don't know to sell things in like you know your new life you now. So first off, let me show some statistics of how many students come here to the United States. Just in the year 2018, more than 1 million students were enrolled in U.S. colleges, making up a 5.5% of the total uh, student body. This amount of students' colleges made up $45 million to the U.S. economy. Another statistic is in the fall of 2017, the amount of students in ELL classes was more than the 10%. 3.7 million of these students are Spanish-speaking students, making up 74.9% of all the ELL students in the country. A total of 7.6% were either Chinese or Arabic students. So now, let's ask the teachers what they think about foreign students coming to the school. When I have students in my class or I see them in the hallway and notice that um, they might be a non-English speaking student, I actually get very excited because I value diversity and I value people from different cultures around the world. And so I'm truly interested in their story and try to connect with those students as best I can and learn from them. I think it's wonderful to have new students and move-ins, especially non-English speakers or limited English speakers uh, coming to our school district every time a new student enters our community. It's a new opportunity for every one of us to learn more and every student has so much to contribute to the learning community and all that each one of us learns. I'm really happy when we get new students, um, especially students that are non-English speakers and they come to our school because it makes everything more interesting since there's a lot of similarity in Millis and a lot of these students have been here since kindergarten. It's great to have the introduction of new kids with new experiences and what they can bring to our classroom. What do I think about new students coming in that are non-English speakers initially? Um, I think it can be a struggle for these students. And after taking an SEI course, I really was open, my eyes were open up to you how difficult of a life it is just for kids to do the normal everyday things. And from a teacher's point of view, it can come off like a, sometimes as a teacher, a student doesn't care but when you actually get to learn about that student and how difficult their struggles are, um, you start to have more compassion as to what they're going through. And um, so I, I think it's a great opportunity for the student to learn another language, but I think at the same time, if there's a lot of um, difficulties that they're going through and a teacher should be aware of them and help the student learn and underline certain vocabulary words or just check in with the student often to make sure they're comprehending the lesson. So, you know, so we've had, um, you know, over the years we've been, I think, actually fortunate to be able to have students join us um, from different countries that speak different language. You know, we've had uh, people from Vietnam, people from Brazil, uh, we've had students from Venezuela. Uh, we've had uh, students come from a variety of different countries. And though I think it's challenging um, for those students to come here because um, some have had you know limited English background, uh, some have had a little bit of English, and some have had no English background. And I think for anyone to get, um, get dropped into a community, no matter where you are, especially maybe here in Millis, since 
you know, we're a, a school of only 333 kids and, and maybe not as diverse as some of the other schools that are out there. I think it can be challenging. Um, I think we are lucky that we have uh, uh, some amazing, really good kids here that have reached out and um, tried to help some of our students when they've come in. The Spanish immersion program has been nice because we do have some kids that speak Spanish. So um, for interest, for, for Marco, who came in from Venezuela, at least we had some students that could communicate with him, uh, which is a really good thing. But yeah, but I worry too, when we've had kids come in from Vietnam or India um, or Brazil, um, you know, our, our Portuguese or Gujarati, our, our, you know, the, those populations of students that we have aren't as great. And so like, I can't personally imagine what it would be like to be dropped into a brand new school, not knowing the language, not knowing the kids, not maybe understanding culture from both sides of things, I think is going to be incredibly difficult. But I also think that with the kids that we've had that have come through, we've learned a lot from each other. Um, and I think that it's pretty amazing that you know we can have students come in from other cultures, from other countries that can share their experiences with us. Um, and, I, and I think for our students, I think that's a huge plus. I just always worry, how do we make sure that we make the kids that are coming in feel comfortable in acclimating to, um, to a new school, new culture, new people, like all of those things. It's always my biggest concern. What will teachers do to help those students to settle here in U.S. schools? To help students settle in the school is easier for me because of my subject matter. I teach social studies, I teach world history, I teach philosophy, and I teach law. So in my classroom, when I've had uh, non-English speaking students, really it's genuinely caring about what they have to say so that they can share their stories with the rest of the students who are from the same area and we all can learn from that by creating an, an environment of openness and truly being genuine about what someone has been through in their life. One of the things I would love to see at Millis High School is an ambassador's club or multicultural club where uh, students who are current students uh, who volunteer to be part of this club are trained in multicultural mm -hmm. understanding, cross-cultural communication, and uh, get paired up with new students um, and are kind of like a mentor or an ambassador to learn more about and help them. Uh, learn more about what's going on in our school and with any adjustments or new opportunities here. I think that one thing we're really good at at Millis is trying to connect to our students and build authentic relationships with them. And when you do that with new students from other countries, then they'll feel more comfortable with sharing their stories with you and sharing information about where they've come from and what they've experienced. Right, what would I do to help students um, settle into the U.S. as they come in here? Um, well, what I currently do is try to check in often and underline vocab words, sometimes put vocabulary lists on the board, make sure the student is comprehending the assignments, especially as a math teacher with word problems, sometimes uh, help them with the translations, and just check in often because students may not be doing homework or answering questions, and they may be just embarrassed that they didn't understand the work from the night before, and um, I would like to reach out and just let them know that they're safe and just like tell them, you know, what is it that you didn't get? And maybe there's more of a reason than just not understanding the math as to why they didn't do their homework. So I, I think when, once students get here that come in from another country and we have a chance to assess what their English abilities are, we can kind of start to, to target some instruction for them to help them um, either you know improve their English speaking abilities um, or if you know if their English speaking skills are good to try to assess where they're at academically and what they've done in the country that they came from because the educational systems as we found out in, in every country are very different um, so we kind of have to get a handle on you know wh wh what grade were you at what did you learn what are the subjects that you've taken uh, and sometimes 
and again, when you have that language barrier, it's sometimes difficult to tell if it's, you know, the English speaking ability that's making it challenging to access the academics, or if there are challenges on the academic side that language isn't the, um, isn't the holdback on it, but there are other difficulties that are there. So we have to try to work to assess those things. Um, and then I think when we've done that, uh, you know, the, the next big thing I think for me is to try to find pieces where we can incorporate language and culture into the things that we do here in the building. And I think that's something we can always do a better job of. Um, I think if you can find and try to connect um, with other students that maybe have similar, similar cultural backgrounds, I think is good just for a comfort level to try to make sure that you have other students that um, the kids are coming in can communicate with. But I also you know, think it's important for our um, students outside of the culture to, to learn about the culture of the student coming in and to share information about the culture that the student's coming into so that we can blend those together um, to make things um, you know a little bit easier for the students to navigate. I think back to a few years ago um, when one of the students that we had had come in uh, from Portugal and uh, from Brazil excuse me and uh, we had a group of students that actually uh, English speaking students that worked to try to coordinate they kind of put like little books together of pictures and words um, and helped the student in like study hall to try to understand English a little bit better um, and I thought that was great because they also learned a lot about um, you know Brazilian culture and Portuguese that we wouldn't normally you know the Portuguese language that we wouldn't normally get um, so I think you know that part of it to me is like being able to you know we're in such a global world now in a global society if we have opportunities to connect to other cultures I think is incredibly important but I also think when we're, we're a school as um, as small as we are, and we don't have a huge population of students coming in from outside the country, we have to try to find ways to help them feel more comfortable in our environment here. Uh, and, and that's, I think, sometimes challenging. Uh, but I also think like, you know, we're always open to ideas and suggestions for things that might help. I know a student that we had last year did the announcements a couple times in her native language, which I thought shared, um, shared something with the school from her culture. I think, you know, I've talked to one of our students this year, we try to play a little bit of music, uh, you know, that uh, over the speakers between periods that is in their native language to kind of share that with our, uh, our staff and our, and our school. And I think um, doing videos like this and creating awareness amongst some of our students who tend to kind of, I think, live in our own little bubbles sometime uh, might give us a chance to pause and put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and so that we can help them feel like a greater part of this amazing school that we have. And how will the teachers and the staff help the foreign students to um, share their cultures and their stories? I would encourage students, it's one of the things for all students that I've ever taught, is to be yourself. So when someone is from a different country and they come here, it's very important is to create that culture in the classroom, in the hallways, to make students feel comfortable enough to want to share their stories, to want to share the stories of their family and how they came to this country. So for me, especially in like a world history class, it, you would open that discussion up to these students so to be able to share their stories with the rest of us. Giving every student opportunities, uh, new newcomers to the United States, opportunities to share through um, media, through art, through music, songwriting, uh, sharing their culture on um, the media in school, for example, the sound system, having music in different languages, um, having students be able to present information that they want others to know about themselves, uh, either through, um, again, artwork that they create or uh, presentations that they give. Uh, I think are ways that students can be encouraged to share more about themselves and the cultures and language and countries that they come from. Um, students that come from other countries have a lot of culture to share with the class, a lot of background that students that grow up in Millis may not have heard of. And so often I will talk to the students about where they're from and then maybe they just share a little bit about what life was like where they're from uh, with the students and we kind of get an idea of the culture that they're coming from, some of the norms for them. Um, 
and it, it's actually can be kind of fun. I mean, with, I know with Marco, we, we looked at Venezuela and all the different things and what it was like for him growing up. Um, I had another student that we just talked about what it was like in his classroom and the difference in rules setting and maybe like socializing with friends and stuff. And so it can be a great learning opportunity. So, you know, I, I think, you know, when we can find better ways to communicate and figure out how everybody's, you know, English abilities are, um, I think it's important for us to be able to, um, to work with the students that we have that are coming in from um, other countries, other cultures, speak different languages, to try to find different things that we can do here to incorporate their, um, their culture into our building. Some of that may be as simple as like, you know, things that I've thought about just since I started taking the job is, you know, like maybe we're able to kind of create like a, you know, pull a bulletin board in the building that kind of is representative of the cultures of the different schools, students that we have in the building to share some different things that gets updated um, maybe regularly, uh, you know, uh, doing some different things around, um, uh, you know, senior projects and whatnot. Um, something like this, this is a senior project uh, that is, I think, going to give very good perspective on um, you know, where, where Marco came from and, and where, um, you know, what, what his experience was like here. You know, and I think that's the other piece of it too, is talking to the students that we have, understanding what their experiences have been like, which to what they wish maybe was different or what they might change, um, things that they liked so that we can do a better job here. Uh, I think of, of making sure that you know, everybody feels comfortable no matter where you come from. Um, you know, I know that's not always the easiest thing for everybody in, in a school as small as, that, as we are, but I do think there are things that we can do to try to help that. You know, the other part of it too is doing a better job connecting with the families as well. Um, mm. And making sure that the families feel a part of our culture too, because a lot of times even though our, the students come in and, and their English speaking abilities get better, a lot of the families sometimes are still, you know, he heavily invested in their native language, which is understandable. Um, but I think, you know, for us to get in some translators and make sure that we're getting messages home the best way that we can, um, you know, and, 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 you know, really partnering up with the families, I think is an important thing. So I think there's a variety of things that we can do, but I, I think we're always open to suggestions and for the students that we that have come through here, their experience and, and what they wish that, which they liked and what they wish they could change. I think is what's really going to kind of drive us going forward because we want to make them feel as comfortable as possible. We want to celebrate them and their culture and traditions and language when they come in the building as well. My name is Brian Craby. I teach social studies at Millis High School. I teach world hist contemporary world history, which is from the Enlightenment to present. I teach intro to philosophy and I teach intro to law. My name is Mrs. Lung and I teach English language learners here in the elementary and middle high school. I'm Erin Cheney and I'm a science teacher in the high school. I teach biology, anatomy and physiology and environmental studies. My name is Miss Young and I teach math in the high school. I'm Mark Badicki and I'm the principal of Lewis High School. My name is Mark Olivares and I'm a senior at Lewis High School. Welcome to Millis. 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 Welcome to Millis.